Hey everyone, today's video is about when you want to fight against someone, but then you pass out. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. Taraki Shoto, who are worried about your matchup during the support festival. He didn't think your powerful boyfriend would understand why. He doesn't. But because he's so arrogant, he can understand others' feelings. But because you're so amazing to him, he can't understand why you underestimate yourself the way you do. When watching you fight, his eyes are focused on you. That's when you take a major blow. The whole stadium is shocked. And he can sit straight in his seat. Don't give up, Wyatt. I know you can win. Haven't seen your usually psych boyfriend cheering for you. With a rare passion. You find yourself friend forgetted with that plus ultra mentality. You manage to get up and finish off your opponent. Despite your injuries. Then you pass out. He's running out of his seat, in the stands, and running to recovery girl's office. Tariq is not even thinking anymore. He just needs to see you. When he gets there, you've already been healed. But she asks you to rest on the bed in their nurse's office for a while to keep the still healing wound settled. You're surprised to see him run in. Catching his breath with wide eyes. Are you okay? He frantically asks. Walking over to Arlene beside you. Peeling a blush rise to your face as Tarki is standing beside you with an expression you'd never seen from him before. Looking down at your face. Embarrassed. I'm sorry if I worried you. I'm just glad you're okay. He sighed. Sitting down on the edge of the bed, quietly scanning over your body, the bandages, and the new little scars. He knew going down the hair path would be like this, but it didn't make it any easier to see you like this. He just wants you to be okay. Wyan scratches the back of her neck with an innocent grin. It was great to have you cheering for me, though. I hope I didn't disappoint you. I'm always impressed by you. He softly smiles. He kind of awkwardly tries to carefully lower himself to hug you, making you laugh as you pull him into a proper hug. The dice squeeze he gives you once resting, he's facing your hair. You know how concerned he was. Darky decides to stay with you. The rest of the time, you're in the nurse's office. Worried anxiously about trying to make sure you're okay and don't get at your energies. Luckily, he lets you use his right hand as a cold compress. Cuddling on the nurse bed together for the next hour. Katsuki Bako. He doesn't understand how someone like you could be getting so intimidating by having to fight some extra. So he's not going to say the most concern. That doesn't mean he isn't actively watching you try and give it your all during the fight. He knows how capable you are, despite how much everyone else is underestimating you because of the injuries you sustained in the beginning of the match. That's when he breaks his silence and grabs him through the railing of the stand, leaning over with a third of her mind and a graded expression. Give them hell, Wyatt. Hearing support from your boyfriend was a new occurrence. Your heart actually skips a beat. Now you're ready to fight. Anything. Quickly turn in the tide. Despite the injuries holding you back. And feeling a heavy weight on you. Babaga's words continue to ring in your ear. As you manage to take down your opponent. Causing the entire stadium to cheer. When you faint, it's like the whole world had stopped. Now he's running out of the stands, aggressively shoving anyone who gets in his way. 
and growling at anyone who even suggests. He slows down. How can he, after he watches your buddy fall so lifelessly? Slamming open the office door. You're startled and shocked to see Baga standing there with a weird expression you had never seen before. Katsuki, what are you doing here? You nervously ask. Why the hell wouldn't I be here? He yelled, ignoring that he was in the nurse's office. His expression was a mixture of concern and anger, but it was unclear who it was targeted to words. You fainted, my aunt. I'm sorry. You bow your head. His anger dissipates only into plain distress as he looks over you. It seemed like you didn't have any major injuries. He was grateful and found his heartbeat relaxing and his brow unfurled. Don't be sorry. He sighed. Would he maybe um, stay with me for a bit? You all fully asked, smiling about when you noticed how worried he had become over you. <sighs> he clucked his tongue. Annoyed. Or at least pretending to be. Where the hell else would I go? He sat in a chair with you for the next hour. While you recovered from your injuries. Not like you cared about watching the other extras fight while you were in the infirmary. You were talking all about the fight and what you want to do to improve your quirk and training. And all he can think about is you fall. Wait. When you got dismissed to go, watch with the rest of your class. Bog was really worried about the injury to your lack. You insist you can walk. But you're limping and walking slowly. So he just kind of forces you to let him give you a piggyback ride. He laugh as he grumpily carries you around. That's so good. Thank you guys for listening to this. Um, yeah. I feel like we're all getting sick. Like every single one of us. If we all got, got corona. But I hope not. I hope not. But like, yeah, we have this. I hope not though. Please guys take, uh, take care and stay safe. Stay safe. Um, maybe it's just because of school. Because I've been going to exams and stuff. Yeah, it's because of that. But I hope we just didn't get anything, dude. My throat hurts so badly. But yeah, thank you guys for listening. Goodbye.